Hey everybody, Mark Davis. Welcome to the immediate aftermath of our Wednesday morning, June 26, 2013 program. I literally need a sort of a post-it note, a mini cue card thing to whip through some things because you could say, you could say the talk show gods are smiling. And listen, and we got some pent up stuff here. I'm like a sailor on shore leave uh, with a week of vacation and fresh back. Let's just, let's take a little walk through some things. All right, first of all, last night, as if you're watching this, it was last night, wee hours, in fact, of this morning, Wednesday morning, Senate Bill 5 in Texas passes, eh, but not in time. That means some very sensible, very meager abortion restrictions did not see the light of day. Governor Perry, I believe, should, I believe will, call another special session so we will see those abortion restrictions. But Lieutenant Governor David Dewhurst is catching a tough ride. He did today from callers who said, how do you not keep control uh, of the Senate? How do you not, uh, how, how do you allow hooligans uh, to take over in the gallery and create so much ruckus that you can't even get a vote? I think those are good questions, and uh, I think it may lead to something like, oh, I don't know, State Senator Dan Patrick challenging Lieutenant Governor Dewhurst for that Lieutenant Gov post. We'll see how that goes. Uh, anyway, the, uh, gay marriage, two bad rulings, not one, but two bad rulings from the Supreme Court today on gay marriage. And please understand, I don't need the Supreme Court uh, to echo or bolster my political or social views. I need the Supreme Court to obey the Constitution. Uh, the Twelve states have taken advantage of their right to give so-called marriage equality, to say that gay marriage, hetero marriage, pretty well the same thing. Those 12 states have the right to do that. The other 38 and the District of Columbia have the right not to do so. All California was doing with Proposition 8 was saying, was putting in its constitution, and this is California, mind you, we're going to have marriage, unique legal definition of marriage as one man, one woman. In no way is this a gay marriage ban. There's no such thing as a gay marriage ban. No one will ever be, no, there's not going to have brown shirts, you know, boom, 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 there are two dudes getting married in there, get out, come on, come on. That's, that's never going to happen. Uh, two men, two women can get married anywhere they wish in America today, have a champagne fountain, gifts, guests, everything, go on a honeymoon, and be as married as I am to my wife, uh, religiously, uh, socially, uh, but just not given the equal status in law. And listen, something does not become uh, a right, a constitutional right, just because you're passionate about it. I believe a restaurant ought to be able to make its own smoking rules, but that's not a constitutional right, so I just need to be a big boy and live with that. Immigration, that's another whole one by itself. This Gang of Eight thing, uh, it's, it's sad. Ted Cruz's uh, star is on the way up. That's not sad, that's lovely. Uh, Marco Rubio taking it on the chin, man. I love Marco, I love Rubio, but the notion of him being president now, God, I don't know. Uh, if he can't get this right, and he doesn't have this right, nor does Lindsey Graham, nor does John McCain, nor do the other Republicans. Well, if you have something that Harry Reid and Charles Schumer want this badly, you know it's a bad idea. I, I hate to have that as a default setting, but it is. If Schumer and Harry Reid think it's a great idea, I don't, at least politically speaking. All right, Paula Dean, what are we going to do with this woman? There is no excuse for walking around dropping N-bombs in 1986. None. There's no excuse for it. However, I think she's guilty of profound ignorance and insensitivity rather than virulent modern-day actual poisonous racism in 2013. For that reason, I think that she should have not been fired by the Food Network or QVC or, who was it, Smithfield uh, Pork Products or whoever. I think she deserved a chance at redemption. I think her redemption is real. Uh, redemption means you realize you did something wrong and you, you make yourself better. Uh, I think there would have been healing to be had in watching her do that and seeing if her contrition was sincere, because I believe it is. Uh, so uh, listen, she's going to be fine. She has a lot of supporters. Uh, and, and I'm, it's kind of funny. Well, Mark, are you a defender or a supporter of Paula Deen? Not in the strictest sense. She was an idiot. I mean, the, the 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 black guys and the white uniforms for a wedding that has that certain look. And, and and oh, by the way, if you are mugged by a black man, it's not okay to drop an end bomb on him. Okay, that doesn't make it okay. I mean, you know, fight back, shoot him while he's mugging you if you want to. Somebody of any race, I'd say that. But the excuse from uh, uh, from sort of Paula Deen Enterprises was well, there was the mugging and all of that. No, 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 no. no doesn't make it okay. And nor does being raised in Savannah. Well, she's a 66-year-old woman from Savannah. 
Has she not watched a television or read a book? Uh, is there some insular audio bubble that prevents the people of, the, of coastal Georgia from recognizing what a hurtful racial epithet is? So there's, there's so no excusing it, no sugarcoating it, but nor did I view it as a career death penalty offense. Uh, President Obama's war on coal, war on American energy, this is kind of interesting, one of the strongest senators to come out against him on this, Joe Manchin of West Virginia, which you might expect, big coal state, but Joe Manchin of West Virginia, key Democrat. Hmm. And finally, Voting Rights Act portion of the Voting Rights Act went bye-bye because 1965 went bye-bye. We are fighting battles, or we were until this court ruling, which was finally the Supreme Court got something right this week, uh, because uh, the, the, they were fighting battles as if it were still the, the mid-1960s, as if we were still hitting bridges full of black folk with water cannons. In, in John Lewis's mind, we still are. He is the proud Georgia congressman who is a hero from the civil rights era, but he thinks it's still 1965, and it's not. It's not. You got to fight battles of 2013 and 2013. The, um, the, the, the Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act, it's still there. It's still there that allows the federal government to step in and sue if actual discrimination takes place. But what are called the Mother May I statutes, where a state has to jump through 47 hoops before moving a polling place from here to here, that, that's stuff of a bygone day. And this portion of the Voting Rights Act had to go away in order to hew with modern reality. Why did the left throw such a conniption fit? Because, uh, because that went away? because it erodes a little bit, well, a lot, of their ability to characterize the South as a terrible place with terrible people and terrible ideas. And why do they need to do that? Because the South, at least for this week, is still pretty conservative from Texas eastward into Louisiana, Mississippi, Alabama, Georgia, North Carolina, South Carolina. That is some Reagan-loving, Republican-loving, Liberty-loving places and voters there who will vote Republican. And the left needs to be able to look at those places and say those are cauldrons of racism and hate hate, and those are people not to be taken seriously, no matter what they say on any issue. It became harder for them to do that this week. Okay, I'm exhausted. Fantastic. See you next time. And of course, every morning on the radio, 7 to 10 Central, Fridays 5 to 10. That's the Bill Bennett Morning in America gig there, 5 to 8. Great to be back from vacation. Great to be back here with all of you. Thanks for listening and for watching here at 660 AM, theanswer.com.